and good afternoon or maybe good evening everyone thank you very much for joining us for today's session um, our webinar study in the uk with uh, great presenters from the university of newcastle the university of manchester and the university of exeter also we have the, the pleasure to have with us today the british council representative for the united states of america but before uh, presenting you officially our um, our speakers today let me just uh, introduce you to the platform and uh, uh, how how you can use the features that were available you can share your questions with uh, with our presenters during their um, their session during the entire session uh, in the chat panel, which is on the right hand side of your screen, and we'll be happy to hear, actually to read from you, uh, where you're watching us from. Without further ado, let me introduce you to our to introduce our presenters: Gabriela, Thomas Day from Newcastle, and Miss Tracy Moore from the University of Exeter. Together with them, uh, today we'll have uh, myself, Pavel Tupor, from the SRT team, and also Miss Jenna Hartswell from the British Council USA. Feel free to share your questions uh, in the chat panel, and we will be answering all the questions in the end of the session. And now I have the pleasure to give the floor to our speaker from the British Council USA, Miss Jenna Hartswell, for giving you a quick overview of what it is to be a student in the UK and how to apply. Jenna, the floor is yours. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for join, joining us on um, a Friday um, afternoon or maybe evening where you are. Um, I hope wherever you are that um, you and your families are safe and well, um, and we're excited um, to join you today to talk about opportunities to study in the UK and how you can make that uh, possible. Um, I heard from Pavel that we have um, people joining us today from um, the US, from Canada. I see people popping up in the chat from um, Italy and Honduras. Um, so we're really excited. And from Mexico. Um, so we're really excited to have you all here today. Um, and I do want to um, just say in advance that um, since I am based in uh, Washington, D.C. in the US, some of my slides might have US specific information. But if you do have a question, um, specific to your country um, that you want to ask, you can ask it in the Q&A and we'll try to address it during the Q&A session after the presentation, or um, we can follow up with you to get you the information that you need. Um, so like Pavel said, um, this session aims to provide you with some useful information about studying in the UK, um, and we'll give you the chance to ask your questions directly to UK University reps um, who Pavel just introduced, um, and they are excited to talk to you um, during this session. To introduce myself quickly, um, you might be able to tell from my accent, um, I'm not British, I'm an American who works for the British Council at the British Council's USA office, uh, like I mentioned, in Washington, D.C. I've been working with the British Council for about five years, and um, the British Council is the UK's organization for cultural relations and education. And so part of our work is promoting opportunities and helping international students to learn more about um, how to study in the UK. Um, so I'm going to give a quick in overview of studying in the UK and how to apply before handing it over to the UK reps um, to talk about their universities and their programs. Um, so like I mentioned, coming from um, the US, when we talk about the UK, um, the UK is the most popular destination for US students going abroad, both for study abroad and for uh, full degrees, like an undergraduate degree or a master's degree. And also a quick note that I always like to make at the top of a presentation is that when we're talking about the UK and we're talking about the four countries that make up the UK, uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England and Wales. Um, so I'm sure some of you have thought about this before coming into the presentation, but I know a question we often get is, um, you know, why do students choose to go to the UK? Um, there are lots of reasons why students uh, choose the UK for um, their university education. Um, 
The UK has over 160 higher education institutions with a diverse range of institutions located across England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. Um, like you saw in the Study UK video just now, there are all types of universities in the UK. Um, you can find ancient universities, more modern universities, urban city campuses, um, campuses located in charming um, old cities or in the beautiful countryside. So you can really find um, a university that is the best fit for you. Um, the great thing also is wherever you choose to study in the UK, you're never too far um, from the rest of the UK. It's very well linked by public transportation, so it's very easy for students um, to get around and explore. Um, the UK also has a global reputation for quality assured education education. All universities in the UK are held to strict standards by the UK government. Um, so you can be assured that you're getting the best quality teaching, support, and resources available. In the UK, you will be taught by world-leading research active academics, so you know that your learning will be current and internationally relevant. Um, and something I always like to highlight is the UK style of teaching. Uh, the academic culture in the UK is self-directed, um, so a lot of students, um, oh, sorry, I see Monica said, I don't understand anything. I can try to slow down if I'm talking too fast. Um, so the academic culture in the UK is self-directed, so you can learn how to conduct independent research and how to think critically. Um, and you have access uh, to comprehensive student support services at the same time. In the UK, you also have a vast range of choice um, when you're choosing what course to study. Um, with over 50,000 undergraduate courses available, um, you have the opportunity to opportunity to specialize at the undergraduate level in the UK, which I will talk about um, more shortly. Um, going to the UK for university can also be a great value compared to studying in the US, for example, um, especially if US students are considering out of state or private tuition and most UK universities are FAFSA approved. Um, meaning that students um, can take their loans abroad to the UK. In the UK, you are also prepared to become a global citizen. UK uh, universities have very diverse student bodies and also academic staff. So you will be exposed to perspectives from all around the world. And since UK universities have some of the most international student bodies in the world, they also have very robust international student support services who are there to support you both in the application process and also while you are at university. So most of what I will talk about is general to the whole UK, um, but there's one key difference to think about in the length of the degrees. Um, so in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, undergraduate degrees are typically three years long unless a student chooses a program with an additional study abroad or work placement year. In Scotland, undergraduate degrees are typically four years long, um, and usually if you're looking to study abroad, they will have those options in the third year of the degree. So just to keep in mind, in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, the degrees will be uh, three years long for an undergraduate degree, and in Scotland, they're typically four years long. Regardless of where you apply in the UK, you will apply directly to a major, which is called a course in the UK. So this can be different than in the US where you can apply undecided. Um, in the UK, you cannot apply undecided as a major. You need to apply to a specific course or major. Um, and there are no general education requirements in the UK like there are in the US. So the degrees are very focused and specialized. Um, this means that you will have the ability to um, really delve deep into the topic um, that you're studying. 
Um, when considering the UK, these are just some things to think about um, to evaluate if the UK would be a good fit for you. Um, so you're looking for, um, since you are applying directly to a degree or a course, um, you want to be committed to a particular field of study that you want to specialize in or delve deep into. Um, UK universities are also looking for students who are comfortable with people from a range of countries and cultures, who will actively participate in campus life beyond the classroom, and who are self-motivated and capable of independent learning. But like I mentioned, um, at the same time, there are uh, support services for students um, to help support you in your independent study. Um, once you're ready to start your uh, search for a university and a course, um, these are the, the resources where you can start that search. Um, UCAS specifically has a portal called UCAS Course Search. Um, every single UK university's courses are on there and you can uh, narrow it down um, to the courses that you're interested in by searching by subject. And then you can find the specific requirements for those courses from, um, from your country. Um, so this is for US students, um, they can apply through UCAS or there are some UK universities that are on the Common App, so that's an additional option um, for students applying from the US. Um, I see I'm already running a little bit out of time, so just to mention that this is the 2021 timeline. Um, this is posted on the UK web UCAS website, but just to give uh, students an idea of when applications are typically submitted. Um, the application for the 2021 um, fall intake or fall start date, um, you can start to submit applications as early as September 8th. Um, if you're considering studying medicine, uh, veterinary medicine science or dentistry or applying to Oxford or Cambridge, you will have an earlier deadline of October 15th. Um, but the general deadline, um, which is called the equal consideration deadline is January 15th. So that's typically um, the deadline that students are aiming for. Um, although many UK universities will accept applications after that date um, if places are available. Um, but again, if you are applying to a more specialized course in medicine, veterinary medicine, science or dentistry, um, or Oxford or Cambridge, you will have that earlier deadline. Um, and just to quickly touch on, um, I know what's on a lot of our minds is the COVID-19 pandemic and how that is impacting um, students going abroad. Um, and I just want to share, in addition to their academic well-being, the UK government and UK universities are treating the safety and security of students as their top priority during this difficult time. Um, UK universities are still accepting uh, 2020 applications. Um, and the 2021 application cycle um, has already opened. So um, you can start to look in the UCAS course search for um, courses that will be available in 2021. Um, UK universities are also starting to announce um, their delivery of programs for fall 2020. So many are will be delivering their courses in a blended model of in-person and online courses. Um, but those announcements are continuing to come out. So we'd recommend that you check on the specific universities um, websites that you're interested in to see um, if they've made an announcement about what their delivery will, delivery will be for fall 2020. Um, and then we are still monitoring travel restrictions and quarantine restrictions. And that's something that's constantly being evaluated and updated. But I do encourage you to check, the, check out the hashtag we are together campaign um, to see how universities and students are supporting each other during this time. Um, so now I would like to turn it over to uh, Tracy Moore um, with the University of Exeter, who um, will share more about her university and, um, and the University of Exeter's programs.
Exeter, Exeter is one of those places where it offers so many things to so many different people. Although it's a small city, there are so many things going on. Exeter feels very historically rich. It just feels very classically British, which is so appealing to so many students, I think. You've got the beach, you've got the countryside, it's perfect. Lots of people go to Exmouth. I go to Sidmouth, Lyme Regis, I like Salcombe as well. The national parks, Dartmoor, Exmoor. There's so many clubs and societies available for you to choose. Societies are the university's way of including everyone. Harry Potter Society and High and Seat Society. There's a large range of sports and there's the option to get involved in high performance sport and recreational sport as well. From shops to independent supermarkets, restaurants, cafes, it has everything. Princess Hay was only kind of recently refurbished, so that's got every kind of high street brand that you would ever need. There's loads of independent shops tucked away at the end of the high street. So Exeter has a variety of nice restaurants here. Whatever kind of food you're wanting, I think you can probably find it in Exeter. There is literally every type of cuisine here at your sport for choice. <laughs> There's like five main clubs and you always bump into people you know and it's just a good night. Basically there's always good atmosphere, good vibes. There's quite a few festivals. I went to EGB this year which is the Enchanted Garden Ball. You should definitely see a concert at the Great Hall whilst you're here. I saw Muse play here. Later that same year I took an exam on the same stage where Muse had played. I think one thing you have to do is get lost. Go down a side street, go wander around for a few hours. You'll see so much more than you actually expected to. In the city centre there's the Royal Albert Memorial Museum which often has visiting exhibits. The biggest theatre in Exeter is on campus. They also do student run productions but they also do professional productions as well. The whole campus is really really beautiful. Beautiful architecture. It's a registered botanical garden so it's like amazing wherever you go. It's that feeling that's what I like so much about Exeter that you're in a city but you can so easily not be academic side and the social side. It's a perfect mix. All the students, they give you a sense of belonging. Everyone welcomes you in. I really enjoy walking on campus and being able to see people you know. I never felt as at home as I do in Exeter. Hi everyone, so I'm Tracy from the University of Exeter. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'm just going to give you a brief overview about why we think um, Exeter is, is truly unique. So we're located in the southwest of England. So we're two hours, 20 minutes by train from the centre of London. And our campuses are located in the city of Exeter in Devon and near the marina town of Falmouth in Cornwall. So we have around 25,000 students across our three campuses and 5,000 of those are from outside the UK, from around 140 different countries, including about 175 from the US. We also have a um, small airport in Exeter where you can go and explore Europe and then a larger airport just an hour away in Bristol. So this is our region. You can see it's beautiful. So our campus is just a 15 minute walk from the city of Exeter. And Exeter, it's a small city, but it's really vibrant and there's lots of history there. We have, as you saw, a really modern shopping centre. And we also have this really beautiful area by the water. You can hire a canoe and canoe up the river. You can hire a bike and cycle to the beach. Um, I live here by the seaside, so I live about 20 minutes from the campus. We also have Dartmoor National Park on our doorstep. So beautiful to go um, hiking, horse riding um, on there and lots of these really cute little seaside towns in our region. So this is our campus. So the first thing you see is it's really green. It's um, a registered botanic garden and it's just like a, a small town. So there's plenty of places to eat and drink. We have a small campus cinema. You heard that we have the Northcott Theatre, the largest theatre in Exeter. 
We're a former Sports University of the Year, and we're consistently in the top 10 for the British University College Sports Leagues. So you can see in this photo on the left, um, we've invested eight million pounds in our sports park. So we have 50 sports clubs that we offer. There's an Olympic standard hockey pitch, indoor tennis and cricket center. And there's a couple examples of our accommodation here. So in the bottom left, it's your left, there's an example of our catered accommodation where meals are provided for you. And then in the top right, there's uh, some of our self-catered accommodation if you want to be a bit more independent and, and make your own meals. And accommodation is guaranteed for first year international students if you apply by the accommodation deadline the end of July. So as well as our main campus in Exeter, we also have a smaller campus where our medical school is based and also our School of Sport and Health Science. And we're in the top 10 in the world for sport related subjects. We also have this beautiful campus in Cornwall, about two hours further south from Exeter. And there's a real environmental and sustainability theme to that campus. So it has subjects like renewable energy, environmental sciences, marine biology. So a really great, great campus. We have over uh, 250 different clubs and societies. So whatever your interest, there's going to be a club for it. We also have our North American, Latin American and international student societies. We have the outdoor society that go and explore our, our beautiful region each weekend. Plenty of opportunities to volunteer. Volunteers really big at Exeter. You can go and help in the local community or climb Kilimanjaro to raise money for an international charity. And as I mentioned about accommodation, so just to say on our website, we've got a really great accommodation section. You can watch um, videos about how to choose your accommodation, how to apply. You can go and have a look at virtual tours of the of the rooms and the accommodation. Um, we've invested a, a lot of money across our campuses over recent years. So as well as the history that's at Exeter, we have our forum there on the right, a £50 million investment opened by the Queen and a real hub for students with places to eat and drink, our libraries there. And you can see our whole range of programmes. So it's right through from accounting to zoology with all those subjects in between. So a whole range. Some are just offered at our main Exeter campus. Some are just offered at our campus in Cornwall. So as I said, subjects like renewable energy, zoology. We have, I think, the only um, mineral mining school in the UK. And some are offered at both campuses, like politics, business. So you can have a look at the modules and the locations of those campuses and see which matches you your interest best. So why choose Exeter? So we're a member of the prestigious Russell Group of research-led universities, which means your academics are really inspirational and they're at the cutting edge of their field of research. We have a gold award for our teaching from the Government Stamp Teaching Excellence Framework. We're a UK top 10 university. And our completion rates are 96%, so um, just fantastic. And Exeter is one of the safest cities in the country. We also have a great um, careers team. So um, you can see number one business school in the UK for graduate outcomes. But our careers team will teach you extra skills like communication, leadership. They'll do um, mock job interviews with you. They'll look at your CV. Employers will come in and be guest speakers. The employers will look at your CV. They'll um, do employment fairs where you can find out about opportunities that are available. And given the current corona situation, a lot of our resources are now online. So we have uh, virtual open days where you can watch academic presentations, you can hear from students, you can learn about our accommodation and sports clubs. 
So the first link there, you can sign up for our September open day. But if you go to that bottom link, the extra.online-event.co, you can sign up for our event that took place a couple of weeks ago and have a look at all those uh, videos that are online. We also have a great Unibuddy platform where you can chat with current students from your country and also or, or if they're studying your subject of interest. So speak to a current student about why Exeter could be a great choice for you. And as I said, really inspirational academics, um, Professor Hugh Williams on the left, they've been looking at young offenders in our institutions in the UK and they found that more than 60% of those young people had had some form of brain injury as they've been growing up. So they're working now, we're working with the government to try and really help and support these young people. And then on the, the right is um, Professor Andy Jones from our Sport and Health Science Department. So we started working with Nike on their Breaking Two project where they wanted to break the two hour marathon record. So we worked alongside uh, wor the world's leading experts in engineering, materials design and nutrition. And so Andy Jones and his team, they worked together uh, with these athletes to find new ways to um, allow them to take on fluids in the form of carbohydrates. So they took this group of elite athletes to Italy and Ilya Kipchoge in the photo, he ran just 25 seconds outside the two hour time, but it was the fastest marathon of any human being. And he's gone on since to break that two hour time. So just some other rankings, We're, we have 23 of our subjects in the UK top 10 eight subjects in the world top 50 and even more in the world top 100. And just to quickly mention our flexible combined honours programme. So it's a really unique programme where you can combine two or sometimes three subjects that don't usually go together. And there's nearly 2000 combinations extra. So you could study um, management and film or biochemistry and drama. So it's it's just fantastic program. And then just to quickly mention ways you can add value to your degree. You could do an industrial placement or professional placement year or a study abroad year that would turn your three year degree into a four year degree. Or you could add a language, you could add credits and then it would appear on your degree title with proficiency in whichever language. We also offer really great pathways at Exeter if you again do additional credits um, or certain credits like entrepreneurship, data analysis and again that can be reflected in your degree title. Many of our programmes are professionally accredited so programmes such as engineering, psychology, law so it um, often will allow you to be exempted from certain uh, professional exams, internships, work experience and also just to mention about study skills it's obviously a different way of studying in the UK with a lot of independent study and we give you those skills to um, to to um, to do that so and, and these are free free um, skills skill sessions that are offered and then just to mention networking opportunities, you're going to be studying with a whole group of like minded, ambitious students from the UK and abroad. And just some examples of the industrial placements that our students have done. And then just to finally mention um, scholarships, so we offer global excellence scholarships across a range of subjects from £5,000 to £7,500 and then sports scholarships, so um, which are around £2,000 per year, but with fantastic coaching packages. And then just to mention about qualifications, so as well as IB, A-levels, we accept a whole variety of US qualifications. So advanced placement tests, SAT subject tests, ACT, you can mix and match. We accept college level credits, associate degrees, so a whole variety.
Great. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please ask any questions that you'd like to. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you. And I'm going to pass over to Gabriella from Middlesex. Thank you. Middlesex University is 20. Middlesex University is 20,000 people from 140 countries learning and teaching and thriving in London. People with ideas, dreams, talent, drive. At Middlesex, we bring this potential and ambition to life. We're more than a university. We're a community of learners, teachers, experimenters, entrepreneurs, national organisations and local business people. Our door is open to everyone, wherever they're from. We teach people for success in today's working world and for tomorrow's too. We build confidence, skills and connections for people to make their mark on the society they live in. And we've been doing this for almost 140 years. Our practical approach to teaching wins awards. Our research makes a difference in the classroom and in the everyday world. Our industry-leading partnerships advance our students as well as businesses. Our facilities are cutting edge and our global network of experts and alumni gives us strong connections in industries of every kind. We believe in learning and doing in the real world. Take our students, like Cyril, who's training to be a mental health nurse and a weightlifting champion. Or Samantha, who set up her own fashion accessories brand. And Chris, who uses dance music to challenge racism. The work we do with our partners, like our tailor-made course for ASDA, that enables employees to get a degree. The Cyber Factory we developed with Festo Didactic, the unique aviation courses that train new pilots for EasyJet and our university's academics, legal experts fighting human rights abuses around the world, innovative designers redefining the future of London's nightclubs, human computer interaction specialists using big data to fight crime. We also invest time and talent into our local London community. That's why our students deliver food and clothing for local homeless people and we put solar panels and living walls on our buildings. It's for the benefit of all. Thanks to our people and what they achieve, we're more than a university. We're life changers, we're future builders. We're always looking for people to make a fantastic future with Middlesex. Join us. Middlesex University is 20, Middle, Middlesex University is Hello everyone. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to jump straight into the presentation. So uh, my name is Gabriella. I'm from Middlesex University. And apart from being the international student recruiter for the Americas, I was also a student at Middlesex. So I can sometimes feel your thoughts and frustrations at this point and not knowing where to study, what qualifications you have. So hopefully this presentation will help you navigate through all of those feelings but if you have any particular questions please feel free to um to email me privately and we can talk about it so one thing that i did want to get out of the way is because many students are very rankings oriented so i wanted to give you that first we are within the top 500 universities in the world we are currently the top modern university in the uk and many of our programs are very well ranked but some of the number one programs in london are film production and photography. So things like BA photography, BA film, BA visual effects, BA TV production, those programs are very well ranked. Uh, also number one for sports science and for social work. And we are currently um, a silver award um, on the teaching excellence framework for our teaching excellence. So you'll get some really good teaching at Middlesex University. Our hometown is London. It is the probably one of the most vibrant cities in the world. Um, just the perception of, of, of London just says something. And many students, many people want to come and work in London. Um, so we're, our campus is located about a 30 minute tube ride from the city center. Um, if you look at the bottom left picture, that's Camden Lock. And that's about a 15 minute tube ride south of the university. So very close to all of this. Um, since you can't travel to Middlesex at this point in time, I thought I'd bring you some pictures um, to get a feeling of it. So this is the quad. It's basically the main entrance to the university. It's a beautiful building. 
surrounded by what we call the college building where um, many of you, if you decide to come to London, might actually be taught in these spaces. So right here is where our fashion students do their fashion runway shows. Robotic students do their robot wrestling competitions. And we also, um, on the International student, student Arrival Day, we pick you up from the airport, bring you here. And this is where we should, um, we usually have our international student tea party. So we bring students, food, beverages, photo opportunities, meet with other international students like yourself and also meet with um, the vice chancellor and other professors. So this is just um, a picture of our, or some pictures of our library. The bottom right picture always reminds me to say that um, academic printing is 100% free for our students. So that is wonderful, especially for students who have to do a dissertation. Um, it is very common for students in the US to ask me, oh, that's the tuition fee, but what about books? And what I love to say is that the university has so much, so many books in the library that you don't necessarily have to buy books in addition. You also get a free ebook for every um, module that you take. And uh, you can take a loan and just keep a book for 20 weeks at a time. So you don't necessarily have to buy a book. And I think that's one, uh, another one of the great support system that we have for students. This is a fitness pod. Um, and talking about fitness, we have so many sports. We play, we have uh, rugby teams, real tennis teams, um, regular tennis as well, football or soccer, um, even wrestling, taekwondo, table tennis. I can mention a bunch, but well over 30 sports teams. So if you're into sports, this is a great opportunity that you might take. In regards to accommodation, um, this is one of our five halls of residence. We also offer private rents and accommodation for those that might want to stay at a landlord's or probably with a family who has an extra room that's also available. But our accommodation basically is um, a bedroom that you do not share with every, anyone and with its own bathroom. So you don't share a bedroom or a bathroom. All you share is a living kitchen room and dining room with the rest of your flatmates. It includes all bills, a weekly cleaner for the common areas, Wi-Fi, and it has very good links to the university and to central London. So that's a great opportunity there. Now, why apply to Middlesex University? And the following reasons are personally, some of which were in my thought process when I was deciding where to study. Number one is the quality of education. British universities are currently, um, British degrees are the highest perceived in the world at the moment. Um, and not only universities, but the city itself, the employment in London itself um, is, is has a great value. Um, and top universities in the world are generally British universities. Um, the tuition fee, so in comparison to U.S. universities, British fees are a lot more affordable. Um, and just the thought, just the fact that you can get a degree in three years versus four years in the U.K., if you think about it, it's already a 25% reduction of the fee, assuming that they were both priced the same way. So it is really very affordable, and you're also getting a better quality of education. So I'm, I'm a very pro-British education, as you can see. Um, I already spoke about this, the, the duration of the degrees. If you're interested in a bachelor's degree, that would normally be three years, especially for US students. If you needed to take an international foundation program, then that might be for an extra year. Um, so it's generally minimum three years, max four years, usually. Um, the location. So for me, it was very important. This is not necessarily your case, but for me, it was very important to uh, live in a city where I knew that I could have everything at my doorstep and also where I could enjoy the city because you're only in university for so many hours a week. Um, and then for the rest of the time, you want to enjoy where you're having that experience. And to me, London was fantastic. It is truly the hub of business, arts, culture, and regardless of your personality, there is a place for you in London, whether you're a bookworm and you love going to libraries, museums, art galleries, or you love the nightlife and going to restaurants and concerts, that also, there's a lot of that in London. 
Um, and finally, the diversity. So not only do we have a great diversity when it comes to programs, we also have um, a lot of diversity when it comes to people. We're one of the most international universities in the UK. Nearly 30% of our student population is international. So just the thought of being in a classroom with people from all over the world is a lot, and, and not only all over the world, but also so many cultures, so many religions, so many backgrounds and life experiences is an experience in itself. So that is one of the things that I mostly love about the university, which is just a reflection of the city of London. Next are academic entry requirements. I thought that many of the attendees of these webinar would be Americans. So I didn't prepare for students from Mexico, like I know that we have a lot. But um, for students from the US, normally you would need a GPA of at least 3.0 plus one of the following, either SAT scores of 550 on each part or an ACT composite score of 23, or at least two AP exams with three plus. We also take the IB diploma, and we also take, um, if you have a year of college equivalent, um, we can look at different things. Also like Exeter, we can mix and match some of those. So um, that's for my US students. If you're not from the US, um, you can contact me privately and I can send you those um, entry requirements that are specific for your own country. And to apply, you would need to go through UCAS, that's www.ucas.com, and that's where you would normally apply for up to five universities. So finally, finances. Our tuition fees go from 13,400 to 13,700 pounds. Currently, that's about 17,000 US dollars per year. Remember, that's normally for just three years. Um, we are able to administer USDE and private US loans. So that is also a possibility for um, US students. And we also have partial scholarships available of up to 5,000 um, pounds for the first year of study. All right, so if you are curious about Middlesex, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me privately at americas at mdx.ac.uk. You can also check our US country page at mdx.ac.uk forward slash USA. And without further ado, I want to introduce you to my colleague from Newcastle University, Thomas Day. Hi everybody, um, so my name is Thomas and I work for Newcastle University. Um, so as you've seen from the video, Newcastle is located, uh, the university is located in the city of Newcastle upon Tyne, which is a well-known, very lively, friendly, um, student-focused city in the heart of the northeast of England. So for those of you who aren't familiar with UK geography, we are there, where the red pin is, um, about Two, two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, three hours by train to London, which is the gold star in the bottom there. We're also 
connected to uh, Edinburgh in Scotland, um, Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham, Liverpool. So all of the major cities in the UK are all reachable by train from Newcastle. We also have our own international airport as well. So we have uh, flights to 80 different destinations across Europe and the world. Um, so there's regular connections to cities like Paris, Amsterdam, London, Munich, Dubai. So it's a great place not only to explore yourself, but also to be able to travel to other parts of Europe from as well. Um, we are consistently ranked one of the best student cities in the UK, um, normally in the top five, often top one or top two. And we're also the most affordable student city in the UK. So we have a very affordable cost of living. Um, for those of you who've maybe been to the UK before and um, possibly been a tourist in London and, and thought maybe it felt a bit expensive, things in Newcastle are often a lot more affordable. We are also one of the safest and friendliest cities. Um, we're not just a student city though, there's lots of chances for you to grow, um, not only in your studies but in your career in Newcastle. We're a hub for innovation, technology, advanced manufacturing and the arts as well. And in your spare time, there's lots to do and see. One of the great things about Newcastle, whilst it's still lively, it's a very compact city. So you can pretty much walk absolutely everywhere in the city. Um, and for those of you who maybe think that the UK is always rainy, well, we're actually one of the driest cities in the UK. Um, so we have less rain than uh, DC, where Jenna is, uh, Mexico City, where some of you might be, Seattle, Rio, Cape Town, Bangkok, and New York. Um, plus many, many other places. So don't just think of the UK as a, as a rainy place, because that's certainly not uh, the case. There's lots to do in your free time in Newcastle. So we have lots of restaurants, bars. Our nightlife is really well known across the whole of the UK, as well as art galleries, theatres, cinemas, parks, muse uh, museums, music festivals, sporting events, and lot more, lots and lots more. And one of the other really great things about Newcastle is um, the city is surrounded by beautiful nature, um, on, on three sides and then on the other side, just 20 minutes away by Metro, we have our beautiful northeast coastline, which has stunning beaches. Um, so these are just some of the pictures I wanted to point out. So we have the city centre there, Grains Monument on the left. Um, Grey is Earl Grey, the guy who the tea is named after. Uh, we have Millennium Bridge, um, which is crosses the River Tyne. Uh, the bottom right corner there is uh, Jesmond, which is a really uh, popular student area within the city. And then we also have Long Sands Beach in Tynemouth. And then a little bit further afield, we have Lindisfarne Castle, Farn Island um, with the Puffins, um, and also the Holy Island of Lindisfarne, which is connected by a road, which when the tide comes in, um, means that the island is actually cut off um, from the mainland. Our campus is located at the heart of the city, which is great because not we we benefit from having a, a campus feel, but at the same time you are in the heart of the city. Um, so this is uh, the heart of our campus. Um, as you can see, it's beautiful old buildings. Our university was established in the 1830s, so we have a long history, and that's reflected in the architecture of our buildings. But we also have uh, new buildings as well. So uh, the bottom right there is uh, where our students who come to do extra English um, and academic study called Into Go To. Um, and then most recently, we've uh, developed uh, alongside the local council and private businesses something called Newcastle Helix, which in total, when it's completed, will be a uh, half a billion or $500 million um, development, um, which will bring together uh, businesses, the university, local community, and residents. And we'll, it will be home to um, our business school, our urban sciences building, as well as uh, the new National Centre for Data and National Centre for Innovation as well. So that's a really exciting development that's going on in the city centre. So just to give you an idea, when I say we're in the heart of the city, the two golden uh, shapes there at the bottom of the screen on the left and the right, they are uh, the main campus on the left and on the right, that's Newcastle Helix. And then the grey square area there, that's the, the city centre. As you can, So as you can see, um, like I said, we are a city centre campus. We have a really strong global reputation and we rank really well in a number of rankings, um, mainly uh, across things like the QS and Guardian World Rankings. We're consistently in the top 150 um, and within the UK, we're a top 25 university. Uh, like Exeter, we're also in the Russell Group, 
for those of you who haven't heard of the Russell Group, it's the UK version of the Ivy League is the best way to describe it. Um, so it includes universities like Cambridge and Oxford as well. And, and we also have received gold for our teaching quality. So not only do our academic staff research um, amazing, groundbreaking, world-leading topics, but um, they also are excellent teachers of their specialist fields as well. In terms of other types of rankings that are very important for students to think about, um, we are top five in the UK for student satisfaction, top 10 for graduate prospects, um, and top 20 most targeted universities in the UK for employers. In terms of our student body, we have uh, around 25,000 students on campus and 120 different nationalities represented, represented um, including 5,000 international students. Um, for those of you who are from the US, which is the market uh, that I focus on, as well as Canada, we have around uh, 120 full-time students, and then we have around about uh, 60 to 80 who come to uh, study abroad with us for a semester as well each year. In terms of our academic excellence, um, we have three faculties across the university. So we teach humanities, social sciences, uh, science, agriculture, and engineering, and medical sciences. So for those interested in humanities, we have uh, subjects like architecture, which is one of our strongest programs, um, as well as uh, our arts and culture school, including uh, media studies. Um, we have very good English language programs, um, modern languages, uh, our Asian language studies are top third in the UK, just behind um, Oxford and Cambridge. And we also have Newcastle University Business School, which is one of only uh, 100 business schools in the world to have triple accreditation, which comes from AACSB, from, for those of you in North America, um, as well as Equus and Amber. So um, other universities and other university business schools in the UK, places like Manchester and Leeds, have this, the same type of accreditation as well. So it gives you an idea of the quality of our business teaching. In our Faculty of Science um, and Engineering and Agriculture, we have uh, lots of different types of engineering, um, including most recently renewable energy. Um, we also teach agriculture. The university actually owns two um, of its own uh, commercial farms. Um, as well as uh, food science, marine science, um, and then also mathematics um, and computing. So as I mentioned, the new School of Computer Science is on the, the Newcastle Helix development. And then we have our medical sciences school, which includes our medical education, sport and exercise science, as well as psychology programs, uh, amongst others. Um, for those of you who are uh, taking uh, US qualifications, um, Typically speaking, we ask for three uh, standardized tests. Um, so that could be the SAT along with two APs, for example, or it could be three APs. Um, these grades will be depending on the subject that you're interested in studying. Um, and you may be required to take specific uh, types of sub, uh, standardized tests. In terms of our tuition fees, uh, they will start around £18,000 a year. Um, medicine and dentistry are obviously a lot more expensive. Uh, but as I said, we are a cheap place to live. So living expenses around $12,000 for an undergraduate student. Um, and often students will spend less than that. Uh, we do also offer scholarships as well, and they depend often on your nationality. Um, for US students, we do have 100% uh, scholarships. For other nationalities, you may fall into one of those groups. Um, and we also offer our sports scholarships as well, where some students will be offered up to £10,000. In terms of the support and, uh, that we offer on campus, um, we have really great student support, um, ranging from um, our International Welcome Week, where we welcome you onto campus and we'll collect you from the airport and show you around, um, through to support during your studies with things like our buddy scheme. Um, and we were actually winner of outstanding uh, student support at the Times Higher Education Awards this year. So we have one of the best student support services in the UK. So if you're uh, stuck with anything academic or personal, then there's always somebody that you can turn to for help. Um, our career service as well is award winning and you can access the career service during your time at the university and uh, for up to three years after. And they can help you with lots of lots of different things like uh, job search, practice in, um, interviews, uh, tips, re writing a CV, um, 
And also whilst you're at the university, they can help you find part-time work as well. And for those students who decide to do a placement year, which is available to uh, students on most of our programmes, then they can also help you find um, a placement as well. In terms of our accommodation, uh, most a uh, lot of our undergraduate accommodation is either on campus or less than 10 minutes away. And we have lots of choice of different types of accommodation. Um, and you can see roughly the prices there at the bottom. We do offer guaranteed accommodation to first year students as long as they apply before 30th of June. And in terms of uh, our sports and societies, we have over 200 different societies and 60 different sports clubs. We've recently invested um, 30 million pounds into new sports facilities and they're still ongoing, um, the, the investment and the building of those. Um, and they'll, they include a huge amount of different sports um, studios, training spaces, um, and uh, as well as outdoor facilities as well. Um, and these are just some examples of the societies that you can join. Uh, so we have the Model United Nations, the Baking Society, Comedy Society. Um, and in terms of sports, we are in the top 10 in the British University and College Sports uh, League. Um, we've been in there for four years now and rowing is our top sport. So for those of you, if you, any of you are rowers, that's, that's where we are often uh, are ranked first in the UK. And, and finally, um, we have some open days coming up this month. So on the 26th and 27th of June. Um, so there's a link there, um, or you can just obviously Google uh, Newcastle University virtual open days and sign up. And um, we also have campus tours available online. Um, and you can also chat with one of our current students through our uni buddy program. And so that's everything from me. Um, I believe now we're going to go to questions um, and answer some of the questions that have been placed in the text. If uh, Gabriella and Tracy want to join me. Um, thank you so much to our university presenters, um, Tracy, Gabrielle, and Thomas, for your presentations um, and sharing with us some really exciting opportunities at your universities. Um, we've received a ton of great questions, um, so I can't wait to get to those. Um, first, I do quickly want to cover a question um, that came through in the chat was to clarify a little bit more where students can go to apply. Um, so I'll just chat about that briefly and then turn off my video so Gabriella um, can come back on the video. Um, so for students, when you're looking to apply, um, you're going to apply through UCAS, just U-C-A-S. Um, it stands for the Universities and Colleges Admission Service. And this is sort of all, all in one um, all in one stop shop for um, searching for courses at UK universities, um, for submitting your application to UK universities, and you can also track your applications um, in UCAS and see your offers and accept or decline your offers in UCAS. Um, and when you are applying in UCAS, um, you are able to apply for up to five different courses. Uh, typically at five different universities. And this is the portal through which you would submit um, your qualification. So like we talked about um, your high school GPA or any standardized test scores that you have, um, you would submit your personal statement through UCAS. Um, you would also um, request someone to submit a reference for you typically might be your counselor or a teacher um, through UCAS. So that's sort of your one stop shop for applying to UK universities um, is the universities and colleges um, admission service, UCAS. Um, so I'm just going to turn off my video now to allow Gabriella to come back. Um, and let's see if Gabriella's there. Great. Um, so I think we'll start with a couple of questions that came in around different types of qualifications. Um, some of those were posed specifically to a certain university, but then um, other reps feel free to, to chime in if those are accepted at your university as well. So um, I know we, were, we received a question um, for Exeter, if the um, IBCP qualification is valid to apply. 
Okay, um, I think that's the IB career program, I yeah. think. So, um, Exeter will consider that program um, where it includes uh, three individual subjects at higher level. So, and obviously just depending on the subject or the program of interest, just any specific subject requirements that are needed for that. But we will consider it, like I said, if it includes three individual higher level subjects. Uh, Gabriella or Thomas, um, do you have any comments to add? So we do not accept the IBCP, but we do accept the IBDP only. So there is a little difference there from Exeter. Yeah, I don't think we accept the IBCP, but I think also someone did mention BTEX, which we do accept. Um, we 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 list the entry requirements on our website for the for each major, so you should be able to choose from a drop down list and see the subject that you're studying. Um, and then I'm sure it's the same for the other universities. If you're not sure, um, you can always send us an email and we can find out for you. Yeah, that's some great advice, Thomas, um, for all of the um, questions coming in specific to the qualifications. Um, we did have one pop up a couple of times, so I wanted to pose this question to you. Um, if a student is from Mexico, what level do they typically need to apply? Who's, is that to me, Jenna? Um, I think that's to all three, um, but we can start with you, Tracy. Okay, um, just to say for Mexico, so if students are studying a, a local curriculum, then we would normally, um, they would usually do a foundation year, which they could do at Exeter. We have a partnership with Into that is based right in the heart of our campus however we do accept a whole range of qualifications so the ib and us qualifications so they may well be studying um they may well be doing ap tests or sat subject tests so that's an alternative as well or a first year at university as well could be considered for um a bachelor's yeah, same for same for us. Is that the same? Uh, it would depend on the student's qualification. If you have a regular Mexican bachillerato, then yes, you might need an international foundation program, or if at Metal Six, an international foundation certificate in a specific area. We have um, international foundation certificates for business or for computer science and engineering, or you can take, you can even take a foundation program at Exeter and we will accept that at Middlesex. Or you could do one year of university locally. Some students already have two semesters of a local um, Mexican university and they decide they don't wanna study in, in Mexico anymore and they wanna to move to the UK and we can also accept that. So if, there, if whoever asked this question has a particular case or a particular set of qualifications, they can email us privately, we can take a look at that. But I hope that kind of answered the question or, or the doubt. Great. Um, thank you. Um, one more general question that came in around qualifications. Um, so this would be a question for all three of you. Um, is the Austrian Matura exam accepted to apply to universities in the UK? I'd say most European high school leaving exams are acceptable for entry to UK universities. I'm not aware of any that aren't. So most of those in the EU should be absolutely fine. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Thomas. Um, so we have this. Um, yeah. Um, this question came in for Middlesex, um, but it would be great to also have Tracy and Thomas comment. Um, so the question came in asking, um, are there courses that have a placement year at Middlesex University? So there is a potential to make any course have a placement year. So you can do a sandwich year. Normally students would study years one and two, then they would do a placement year and then come back for year three. So yes, there is a possibility. Um, potentially any program can become a 
placement year program. Um, so yeah. And and just to add the same for Exeter and and also just to bear in mind how great that extra year mm -hmm. looks on your CV to employers and it's often at a reduced rate. So our study abroad years, our professional placement years are normally at Exeter, it's about 15% of the tuition fees for that year. And for a professional placement year, you would usually get paid as well. So it's a really great option. Yeah, the same as Newcastle as well. Almost all programs offer you the option to to have a, a placement year. It's worth pointing out that just because you choose to have a placement year doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find a job for that year, though. It's not a guarantee, um, but our career service will certainly help you uh, to find a position. And often companies will have had a previous student from us um, and they will then tell us, oh, OK, well, we would like to take some more Newcastle students this year. So a lot of it can be word of mouth. Um, but as well, like Tracy said, they're often paid and paid a, a good salary as well, not just a, kind of a small amount. They'll, they'll be it's more than enough to, to live on for a year. You may even be able to save some money to help towards your living costs in your final year as well. Thank you. Um, and this is a question for Newcastle, um, but we can also get um, Tracy and Gabriella um, to weigh in as well. Um, does Newcastle University offer interdisciplinary majors? Yes, we do. So I think Tracy mentioned in her presentation that Exeter has a combined honours programme. And um, we also offer the same uh, combined honours degree um, with students can choose to combine uh, up to three different subjects um, from a list of about 25. And um, so they are quite different. There's, there are foreign languages on there. We have things like politics and philosophy, um, as well as um, some science subjects. So you can combine um, three different subjects. Um, if you don't like all three after your first year, you can you can drop one of them um, and continue with just two um, uh, through to your to your final graduation year. Yeah, yeah, and let's say it's a really great option. And just to add, um, for Exeter, you could give different weighting to those choices as well. So if you did two subjects, you could do them 50-50 um, or 75-25. And then say you did criminology and biochemistry, and then you decided that you really were enjoying criminology, you could increase that percentage in the second year and make it maybe more criminology, less biochemistry. So a really, really great options that, that we offer yeah, there. Middlesex doesn't offer us. that. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have programs that, no, it's great <laughs> that, that we're answering these questions because I think it's very helpful for students. So at Middlesex, mm. we have programs with to similar interests. For example, psychology with criminology, psychology with education, business with marketing. Um, but we don't have, we don't um, merge two different areas like psychology with dance or biochemistry with theater arts. So unfortunately that would be a no for us. However, we have over a hundred different undergraduate programs. So it might be a good idea to go over our courses, you may find the program that you really want to study. Great. Um, and if a student is studying, say, a, a combined course, um, like a double major, um, would that be double tuition or would that be similar tuition to other courses? Um, oh. The, oh, sorry. I okay. I was just going to say um, for Exeter, obviously uh, the price will will depend on what the subjects chosen are. So obviously, if it's um, if they choose more business humanities, then it's going to be um, cheaper than maybe some of the more sort of engineering, geography, um, computer science sort of subjects. It's, it's worth pointing out as well, it's not a double major in the sense of a double major in the US. So it's it's the same number of credits as if the student was studying one subject. It's just that the credits are split across two or three subjects. 
And um, so in the UK, a bachelor's degree is 120 credits per year at every single university, regardless of the program that you're studying. Um, and, and so a, it, you can't do more than 120 credits and you can't do less than 120 credits, which is why I think Tracy referenced um, having a really good um, uh, number of students who finish on time because pretty much the system makes sure that you do you do do that you don't have any issues whereby like in the US you may not be able to get enough credits in the year and so you have to re-enroll the following year you, you don't have that issue at UK universities um, thank you um, yeah that's great clarification um, we now we received several questions around scholarships and I know that um, scholarships were addressed in some of your presentations but I wondered if um, each of you could share where students should go to look for information about scholarships from your universities. Um, specifically, we had questions about scholarships or financial aid for um, Latin American students, um, specifically students from Mexico and also EU students. Um, so I guess, Thomas, we can start with you and then to Tracy and then to Gabriela. Sure. Um, so on our uh, on our website, we have a section um, that's for international students and on there there's a page called Your Country. If you go on the Your Country page and choose the country that you're from, you would be able to see on there which scholarships you can apply for. Um, and, and that's the, the, the best way of, of having a look. Right now, the information that's on there is only applicable to students who are coming in 2020. So um, I'd say if you're interested in 2021, you may need to wait um, until probably uh, August or September before that information's updated. And, and same for us, say, same as Thomas said, we, we've got a really good uh, funding database on our website, so very similar. You can put in your country of domicile and then the, your subject of interest and it will show you scholarships that, that are right, available. So similar to Newcastle, you would normally go to your country page. For Mexico, that would be mdx.ac.uk forward slash Mexico or forward slash USA. Um, uh, but if you go on the part that says international, you can find the specific country that you're looking for. Otherwise, you can email eu-enquiries at mdx.ac.uk or americas at mdx.ac.uk if you're from one of those two continents. And um, that's in case you don't find your specific country page. Great, thank you. We also received several questions around um, certain sports or clubs that are available at your universities. Um, specifically, we have students in the chat asking if um, your universities have a golf team, soccer team, and dance club. Um, so maybe we can start with you, Gabrielle, and then move then down to Tracy and then to Thomas, um, just maybe you can share where students can look for those types of opportunities on your university's website. And if you know offhand yeah. if those are offered as well. So if you go on mdx.ac.uk, there's a part on the top where it says student life. And that's where you would normally see the sports um, facilities that we have and, um, and basically the sports that we play or the teams. Yes, we do have facilities or we can give students access to facilities such as golf. Um, and I don't remember specifically the, the ones that you mentioned, but I, you mentioned dance. Yes, so yes dance. we also have dance teams. Guys, we have a Bollywood student <laughs> team. So <laughs> there's, there's a lot, so many students, um, kind of things that they can do and clubs and societies we have an anime society so and if we don't have a society you can make your own society so um yeah look for that but in short yes we do <laughs> 
Um, and just to add for, for Exeter, so yeah, obviously football is huge in the UK. Um, we have, like I said, 50 different sports clubs. So I think we've got about 10 teams for football and you can play it competitively or just for fun. Uh, golf, golf's one of our performance sports at Exeter. So we have one of the largest um golf clubs in the UK and again you can play it we have students that are at an international level or those that have never picked up a, a club before um, and then for dance there's yeah all different types of dance I'm not sure if we've got Bollywood I hope we do um, but we have things like ballroom and Latin um, break dancing plus like general fitness classes just general dance classes like that so whatever type of dance um yeah hopefully hopefully there'll be the opportunity to do that and pretty much the same for us as well yeah um we have a golf uh, golf team um as i said in my presentation newcastle surrounded by countryside which means we're also surrounded by golf courses um so some of those are pga courses as well so if you're a professional player there's some great courses to play on and um, but you can also do a lot of our sports just for fun as well it's not as serious and competitive as um it, it may be in, in us universities and um, you can just give things a try and, and have a go which is really nice as well great um, and we have a, a final question around um, a participant wrote in asking how um, the UK's degrees are recognized abroad. Um, this question was specifically about the USA, um, but perhaps you could just comment on how UK degrees are perceived or accepted outside of the UK. Um, Tracy, can we start with you and then um, we could have Gabriella and Thomas chime in as well if they'd like to. Yeah, sure. Um, just to say that our our qualifications are internationally recognised. Um, obviously, uh, I think we've all said that that we have very high levels of employment rates for our graduate students. I think the British Council did a a survey yes. a, a few years ago. Yeah, that just showed how highly valued. Um, US employers consider a degree to be the same or higher than a, a US degree. So yes, very highly valued. Yeah, same. I have no further comments. I mean, it, it, it would be the same as Tracy's answer. Yeah, the same here. I mean, it's always worth double checking if your particular subject so say medicine, um, you might need to be careful with something like that, um, but that is still recognised in, in pretty much most countries in the world. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, the UK is home to the second oldest university in the world. So we've been doing higher education for quite a long time, so we're pretty good at it. I think, yeah, that's a great um, note to in the Q&A on. And I know we have a lot of other fantastic questions that came in, um, but I know uh, Pavel from SRT is going to come back on um, to say thank you and also explain um, the type of follow-up information that you will all receive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenna. And thank you, our great presenters, for this uh, lovely presentations today. It was uh, very, very lovely session with all of you. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, uh, for watching us from all over the Americas. Uh, we will send you shortly uh, an email with information about the contact details of our speakers today, along with a recording of today's session. Stay tuned for more SRT webinars upcoming in the next weeks. And from our team, we wish you a lovely weekend ahead. Thank you very much once again, our lovely present presenters. Thank you, Jenna, for supporting us for this lovely uh, question and answer sessions. And stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye.